you know, there was this weird thing that happened where she ended up meeting, I believe, Armored Skeptic, Greg, and Andy Worski at VidCon. Greg and Andy seemed very sincere in terms of, like, we're just trying to understand each other. Like, yeah, we know on the internet we kind of get in these, like, kayfabe, like, wrestling, like, very aggressive things. And we think that we've kind of built some kind of bridge of understanding. And they were very excited. They were, like, audit, like you could hear the excitement in their voice about, like, actually doing yeah. something positive. And for Francesca Ramsey to, like, to, like, now be like, oh, why does anyone deserve forgiveness? It's like, I guess it makes sense. Even back, you know, like, years and years ago, she was, like, spitting in, you know, these people's faces when they tried to build community with her. I'm not making a video about this, but I'm so angry <laughs> that like I just have to say something and just like get it out and let it go. My God, she's been crying. Um, so recently, there's been a wave of people who've made bigoted content on the internet coming forward and apologizing. TikTok, we've got Kelly Cagden. On YouTube, we have I. Dubs, I think is how you say his name. <laughs> um, and in years past, we've had Shane Dawson. And all of these people I have different relationships with. It, so I hosted a show for MTV called MTV Decoded. I actually created the show. I wrote on the show. I hired tons of incredible people and made a lot of great content that I am very proud of. But at the time that the show was on, I dealt with a lot of harassment because of it from these people that- Because your content was racist as fuck. <laughs> like that was a reaction to the content. That's like a huge but, part of the story here. Can you, you give me the backstory on the, of what the show is? You can't jump on the internet and make a, a, a show that basically propagates the stereotype that all white people are racists and not expect people to respond. It's the exact same thing with the Gamergate stuff. It's like if you want to jump on the internet and start making videos about how all men are sexist pigs, you're going to get a lot of people angry, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people got angry at these videos because they're like, wait, I'm white and I'm not racist. What the fuck? Why am I caught up in this nightmare? And there was no response to this. Like they literally made one, you know, does MTV hate all white people as if this was their response. <laughs> it's like right. they saw the criticism and they doubled down on it every single time. Double down, triple down, quadruple down. Look, this is even right here. For some reason, they've convinced people to perceive their objections to being categorized to, to basically being caught up in this race essentialist argument about white people, they've uh, are basically submitting. They're saying, okay, well, me responding to you being racist was actually them being racist. What? What's happening here? What is happening? Well, I mean, that makes sense if you define racism in such a way as to where you can't be racist to white people. Yeah, are, are you not familiar with her content, uh, Doomer? No, I, I don't know. Okay, so... What's, what's MTV Decoded? So, Francesca Ramsey... <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Francesca Ramsey, in like, I think it was like 2017, she was like one of the original SJWs that, you know, all the anti-SJWs and skeptics would respond to. She had a show on MTV called MTV Decoded, and it was like one of the first big platforms to kind of just go over, you know, promoting all the, you know, woke shit that we hear, all the CRT shit that you hear, you know... Uh, you know, you can't be racist against white people. We live in a white supremacist society. You know, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff. All the hyper-woke CRT stuff. Like, she was one of the big first people pushing this shit. And so, obviously, lots of people, most notably Andy Worski, would just constantly do reply videos to all of her garbage. You know, all these garbage videos that she would put out. And um, she didn't like it. And now she's very upset that, I guess, Chris Reagan and some other people have sort of, like, you know, changes their politics a little bit. So, well, Chris Reagan actually did. He did. Um, it wasn't just Andy did, Worski, though. I mean, right? I but Andy Worski did like the most, right? Um, I don't know. I don't but every, there are a lot of people that did content. Sargon did content. I did fucking reply content to her. Chris Reagan notably did uh, a few videos to her, including having her, I think, face and, and image be in some of his music videos, which were very funny. And so she's kind of resented this. She's been nursing this resentment forever. Look, you're a public figure. Suck it up. What do you want? Right. And uh, but but the notable thing, the really very bizarre notable thing about this too, is that, you know, there was this weird thing that happened where she ended up meeting, I believe, Armored Skeptic, 
Greg and Andy Worski at VidCon. And they had like very nice conversations in person. And after that happened, both Greg and Andy Worski went back and filmed videos to their audience explaining how they felt like they had good productive conversations with Francesca Ramsey. And maybe this was like a, you know, a way to build like kind of a way to get rid of the animosity and maybe to bring, you know, understanding between both sides, you know, two sides is political issue. And after they both dropped their video, basically praising Francesca Ramsey for kind of like oh, expanding her mind and, you know, going through all this stuff. Um, like, like a few weeks later, Francesca Ramsey goes on her husband's podcast and shits all over them. Yeah. She's like, oh, these fucking idiots, these racist trolls, you know, they're so racist and trolly to me. And then when they meet me in person, they're so nice to me. And I was like, what the fuck? She just like took all the charity they gave her and she like literally just spit in their faces and took a crap all over it. It was like wild. It was insane. And I, I remember Andy and Greg made these like long videos about it. And it's just like, it's one of the most like fucking wild shit I've ever seen. And for Francesca Ramsey to like, to like now be like, oh, why does anyone deserve forgiveness? It's like, I guess it makes sense. Even back, you know, like years and years ago, she was like spitting in, you know, these people's faces when they tried to build community with her. Nobody's okay. going to forgive you. You can't, you can't go the forgiveness route. It's just, it doesn't work in this situation. People are political. They don't want forgiveness. They want a pound of flesh is what they want. Yeah, I mean that's kind of like a, an issue with the internet and online discourse in general. Like, of course it is. Yeah. There's no there's no incentive to forgive people. <laughs> yes. No one no one gets forgiveness. I mean, there are people that are still paying the price for, you know, right. relatively minor infractions. And Save you, know, you people, people fucking years later will just be pounded the fucking pavement. It's one of the most I think it's one of the most hypocritical and bothersome things to me. Totally. For a lot of the leftoids that I generally speaking like have this attitude of like holding massive grudges and trying to cancel people for minor fucking shit that happened five years ago. It, it really annoys the fuck out of me. Like, come on, dude. And it, yeah. and it was, it was extra gross too. Cause I remember the time like Greg and Andy seemed very sincere in terms of like, we're just trying to understand each other. Like, yeah, we know on the internet, we kind of get in these like kayfabe, like wrestling, like very aggressive things. And we think that we've kind of built some kind of bridge of understanding and they were very excited they were like audit like you could hear the excitement in their voice about like actually doing yeah. something positive and then for her to just like crap on that and i think she even said something about how like she was doing this intentionally like going undercover yeah, totally to like uh expose them or whatever which doesn't even make sense because it's like well it's not like she did a video on them right like unless unless what she meant was she was like going undercover to be like i'm gonna catch them saying the n-word and then when it turned <laughs> out they were nice she's like i guess i can't use this you know? yeah, i can I I see the thumbnail dude going undercover is a good person <laughs> yeah you're right it's like what the fuck so. i mean deep stuff that labeled themselves anti-social justice warriors, anti-feminists on YouTube, including iDubs. And he made a number of videos where he used the N-word fully uncensored, where he put my face in videos and called me, you know, a re and you know said that my work was cancer and like his my work made him want to kill himself. All, most of these videos- I mean, <laughs> I know mood, right? <laughs> I mean, mood, it's right? About. You know, I, I agree. I agree. But I still can't. I couldn't find those videos. I can't find this video. So I'm I'm going to say it doesn't exist. Her vi her videos are racist. We went back and watched one on the Sunday show. Her videos are totally racist. They're race right. essentialist. They promote a stereotype that all white people are racist. And you look, you can't subscribe to CRT and avoid this. I, I don't care what people say. Like, if you believe that all of our institutions are in, in, imbued with some sort of racism because white people are unable to be anti-racist, that's a stereotype. You're promoting a stereotype. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Uh, become the knight for $20. Thank you so much. Says, forget A-team or S-class. I'm on team Doomers Groomers. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Disavow. <laughs> Doomer. I like that. Doomers Groomers. Jeez. Look at you. There you go. Doomer. Uh, oh, the Doomer uh, files. <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite of a groomer. Okay, young chicks are fucking gross, dude. Give me chicks in their forties. Wow, look at that. I want some G milfs? He doesn't even want the milfs. He wants the G milfs. The gilfs. The gilfs. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Fistfight Caleb for $20 says he should have converted to Catholicism. Their confessions are in a box behind closed doors to one person. This is borderline public self-flagellation for pretty minor sins. Love you in the show. It's us! It's us! Woo! Well, thank you, Caleb. Philida uh, Fili Adamus. Adamus, thank you so much for the 10,000 Hufflepuffs. Says, I recently saw a bad video on why capitalism bad, and the only real points made in the video are from a 100% academic study on why capitalism actually is creating poverty. Google Dylan Sullivan Jason Hickel. Science Direct might send in might send it to Sean or Smith. Well, I'll check it out. That sounds positively awful. Yeah, we'll check it out. I'll save that. Yeah. But anyway, let's keep going. This has been privated, so... I can't show them to you, but I've seen them. And he created a culture and a fan base that then harassed me. So did Shane Dawson. And the caption on the video read, a response regarding creators who rebrand or outright denounce their past racist or bigoted content via apology video. The culture of harassment and bigotry you've created and profited off is not a race with a sorry or a rebrand. When I look- this, this is a problem. I just want to mention it because like obviously we don't want our audience to go and harass people i don't think we have really that type of audience mm -hmm. i do understand why you are going to get harassment like if you are coming out and putting racist content in the world and you're completely unaware of what you're doing like you are committing a kind of moral infraction that will give people the thought process that they have an excuse to be horrible people to you. I mean, this is exactly the same thing that goes on on the left. The left says everyone is being racist towards me and therefore I can be a, dis a despicable human being. So mm -hmm. that's kind well, of the situation right. that's going on here. I don't condone it. Like you guys should not be content, like harassing content creators in real right. life. But I understand well, yeah. what's going on. I, like, yeah. if Sitch and I started making videos that were racist as fuck, I would expect to start getting massive amounts of harassment. Or even it's like, like, yeah, obviously, you know, no one in our audience obviously should go and, like, harass anyone. Definitely. Like, that just, even even if you want to do that, even if you just don't, like, morally you don't care, it's just going to make us look bad. So <laughs> I'd ask you not to do it, even from a pragmatic perspective, if the moral reason won't, um, you know, appeal to you. But, like... The thing that, that that annoys me with the way that that Francesca frames this, and so many people frame this, is like if you come out and you have a very strong political take on an issue, people are going to disagree with you, and they're going to tell you they disagree with you, and like yeah, there's going to be people that take it too far. There's going to be people be people that call you names. So there's going to be people that are going to be racist against you. But then what they do is they play this victimhood game where they act like you know there's like a hundred responses to Francesca, and they like ninety five of them like disagree with the politics or offend or offended by what she's saying. And then five of them are racist. And then she'll just say like, oh, they're all racist. They're all yeah, racist trolls. Exactly. Right? She'll just fixate on like the, the ones that make her argument look better, that make her look better like a victim. So Yeah, it's horrible. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.